Mazda CX-60 aims to establish its brand in the premium part of the upper mid-sized SUV segment. In this, it'll be aided by sharp driving dynamics, a refreshing, different and rather classy cabin, and the option of a PHEV powertrain with a 39-mile driving range. It's more affordable than obvious rivals, better equipped, and really rather different. Mazda thinks differently and continues to do so with this car, the CX-60. This SUV is the largest model the brand has made in recent times and in this plug-in hybrid form, the fastest too. The platform's all new and there's a hand-finished, crafted in Japan design ethos that the company hopes will propel this car into contention with premium rivals. It's certainly refreshing that the Mark has its own unique development style. Without that, we wouldn't have had lightweight Wankel rotary engines, backwards-facing rear doors, or the iconic MX-5 Roadster. At first glance, there isn't quite as much of that sort of innovation with this CX-60, but it's there if you look for it. The engines buck the trend for turbocharging and lower cubic capacity. The new auto gearbox swaps the usual torque converter for an electrically controlled clutch pack. And there's even a facial recognition camera to automatically adjust the driver's seat for you. Previous Mazda followers will be more interested to see if the brand's usual sharp handling's been preserved by this 2.1-ton SUV. The company promises its snappily titled Skyactiv Multi-Solution Scalable Architecture Platform will help deliver that. It's a chassis that's made possible the introduction of a PHEV powertrain, the company's very first, and a pair of more conventionally electrified M-Hybrid mild hybrid petrol and diesel units. It's also tasked with underpinning the Mark's next large model, the seven-seat CX-80. So, Mazda is going upmarket in product size, image quality and luxury. Can cars like this one support that move? Well, you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test, to find out. Mazda has correctly identified that, with a couple of exceptions, upper mid-sized SUVs are generally pretty uninspiring to drive. So enormous efforts have been made here to deliver something a bit more engaging, or at least as engaging as a two-ton crossover is ever going to be. This CX-60's new Skyactiv multi-solution scalable architecture platform counts for a lot of that weight, but it is at least a stiffer thing to build on than the aging underpinnings of the brand's only slightly smaller CX-5 SUV. Plus, to that new chassis, the engineers have built in a clever corner stabilizing system lately added to the MX-5 sports car. Mazda calls it kinetic posture control. It all sounds quite promising, particularly as the engines are new too. All of them in typical Mazda style, bucking the industry trend for low capacity sizing and turbocharged tech. And there's plenty of power across the three different powertrains on offer. In fact, the two and a half litre four cylinder unit we're trying here, fitted to the plug-in hybrid variant, puts out a lusty 327 PS, which makes this the highest output car of any kind the brand has ever made. The drivetrain's 175 PS electric motor contributes a big slug of that, making possible a diesel-like 500 Newton meter torque figure transmitted to the tarmac via an on-demand all-wheel drive system. But all PHEV models in this segment have lusty power plants needed to overcome the prodigious combined weight of their 4x4 mechanicals and heavy electrical power plants. This CX-60 doesn't have much trouble doing that, sprinting to 62 miles an hour from rest in just 5.8 seconds, en route to a less eye-catching top speed of 124 miles an hour. From the slightly straining engine note though, you're never left in any doubt that the engine ahead of you has only four cylinders. Apart from this powertrain's lack of turbocharger, the other unusual thing about it is a clever new eight-speed auto gearbox, 
which ditches the usual torque converter in favour of a multi-plate clutch and an integrated electric motor and generator, which apparently means that pulling power is transmitted to the wheels more directly, with the kind of fast and rhythmic cog shifting you get with a manual gearbox. The take-up's certainly smooth, as is the handover between the electric motor and the engine. Officially rated to happen at 39 miles, but more likely in real-world driving to occur at around the 30-mile mark. That switch, we should point out, is far more noticeable when the 17.8 kilowatt hour battery is low on charge, at which point you'll feel plenty of vibration through the cabin floor. The car always defaults to full battery power from startup and will stay that way if you select its most eco-friendly EV drive setting. That's one of four provided My Drive modes. You select via this silver button ahead of the gear stick, which all get accompanied by colour changes on the TFT instrument display screen. Grey for normal and off-road, red for sport and blue for EV. Specify a tow bar and Mazda will add a further towing setting, allowing you to better access the 2,500 kilo braked trailer rating, an impressively high figure for a PHEV. Near the My Drive rocker switch is a further button that, when activated, enables the engine to charge the battery while you drive. Of more use is the option buried away in the centre screen's settings menu to alter the car's brake regeneration level. There are only two options, normal or high, the latter slowing the car a little more noticeably. We mentioned that two other engines are available in the CX60 range, both of them non-plug-in power plants, the 3.3-litre E Skyactiv D diesel and the 3.0-litre E Skyactiv X petrol. Both are large capacity six cylinder units and each also features electrification, but it's of the much less significant mild hybrid kind. In either case, what's called an M hybrid boost system adds a small electric motor to support the engine with energy, recuperated when coasting or slowing at the kind of low speeds where combustion units are usually not very efficient. That energy then gets used when pulling away and also adds extra smoothness during gear shifts. As usual, with mild hybrids, you don't really notice it, but you probably would if it wasn't there. Of the two MHEV models, it's the diesel version that most who don't want this PHEV will probably choose, embellished with complicated sounding combustion technology. Distribution controlled, partially premixed compression ignition, since you ask. That's supposed to improve acceleration response, and sure enough, if you're quick with the provided steering wheel paddles, the 254 PS all wheel drive E Skyactiv D model makes 62 miles an hour from rest in 7.4 seconds en route to 136 miles an hour. There's also a rear driven diesel variant using a detuned. 200 PS version of the same engine, and for that the figures are 8.4 seconds and 132 miles an hour. As we said, there is another rather different alternative if four-cylinder plug-in hybrid motoring is not for you. Mazda's clever 3.0-litre E Skyactiv X petrol unit, which might make even more sense than putting a diesel in your CX60. We've already seen the brand Skyactiv X engine formula work well in four-cylinder form with its smaller models, using innovative, precise combustion control technology. Plus, there's an integral EGR control to achieve a particularly low ratio of fuel to air. The result is sparky performance, but near diesel-like fuel economy. Whatever engine you choose in your CX60, Mazda hopes that you'll find the driving experience a touch more engaging than models that conform to the class norm. And sure enough, this SUV is certainly more agile than you might expect an SUV of this size to be through the turns, an attribute partly due to the neat KPC or kinematic posture control system we referenced earlier. It's easy to dismiss this as simply a differently branded torque vectoring system, one of those that adds imperceptible braking to the wheels to stabilise the car through bends. The 
Torque BC is actually rather different. First of all, because unlike torque vectoring, it's not activated by driver input. Instead, KPC is triggered when it senses the difference in speed between two wheels while rounding a curve, at which point it uses a fractional amount of braking to give a downward pull on the inside rear suspension, which exerts a little upward force on the wheel, mitigating roll, drawing the body downwards and stabilizing the car. And because the system uses existing sensors, it carries no weight penalty. Other aspects of this car's dynamic development have, in our view, been slightly less successfully completed. Mazda has given the dual pinion electric power steering system a more rigid EPS motor and stiffer parts in an attempt to create a more consistent relationship between steering angle and front tyre angle. But feedback from the rack is still disappointingly remote for a crossover that's advertised as being able to put the sport back into SUV. We're not entirely sure either about the damping. Huge effort has been put into redesigning the suspension so that it stabilises vehicle posture, reduces lateral cornering lean and helps the tyres grip the road better. Unfortunately, much less effort appears to have been put into making sure that the system, a double wishbone front and multi-link rear setup, actually absorbs the bumps properly. It's on the firm side and fusses over porous surfaces more than it should. Nor does Mazda offer an adaptive damping system to mitigate the problem. Fortunately, things settle down a bit at highway speeds where refinement's acceptable but doesn't approach the highest class standards thanks to wind roar and a bit of whine from the motor under acceleration. That's despite copious amounts of sound insulation, the addition of a two-wall body panel and surface material structure and an extra cushioning layer inserted between the bodywork panels and those in the cabin. Still, this car remains relaxing over longer trips, particularly if you pay extra for an optional pack full of drive assist features like eye adaptive cruise control, Mazda radar cruise control and cruising traffic support. You probably won't need much in terms of off-road driving prowess and Mazda doesn't really provide it, though as we said earlier, the My Drive mode system has an off-road setting and this hill descent control to help ease you down slippery slopes. Of more importance, of course, is this car's suitability for the urban jungle, an environment in which it works well, mainly due to excellent front and sidewards visibility, which is better by design. The base of the A-pillar has been given a large curved shape to make it easier to see at junctions and the shape of the bonnet has been fashioned so you can more easily see its leading edge. Mazda's actually measured what it calls the bonnet's diagonal forward visibility threshold, basically the amount of road service hidden by the vehicle corner diagonally opposite the driver, pointing out that it's been shortened by 303 millimetres compared to the smaller CX-5. In the same way, the so-called forward visibility threshold, the amount of road hidden by the vehicle directly in front of the driver, has also been shortened by 100 millimetres. What it all means is that those who might be nervous about manoeuvring a larger SUV like this through congested city streets will feel more at home with this one, especially if your CX-60 has been fitted with the optional 360 view camera system, which includes a clever see-through view that helps you in tight spaces. It's a thoughtful touch and there are plenty of those on this car designed to reward a thoughtful customer. You'd certainly recognise this as a Mazda, which might not necessarily be a good thing for this car's premium aspirations, particularly as it might be mistaken for the company's mid-sized CX-5 SUV at first glance. It's actually quite a lot bigger than one of those, measuring 4,745 millimetres long, 1,890 millimetres wide, and 1,675 millimetres high. 
The styling is heavily influenced by the brand's 2017 Vision Coupe concept, but features a fatter treatment for the front end, and obviously, since it's a crossover, quite a different profile silhouette. Noble toughness was apparently the styling concept here in this latest evolution of Mazda's Kodo, or Soul of Motion design philosophy, apparently influenced in this case by the Japanese concept of Ma, the calm and dignified beauty of empty space. Well, there's certainly plenty of empty space beneath the bonnet, where this PHEV model's four-cylinder engine looks a little lost in a bay designed for the six-cylinder units further up the range. The long bonnet dominates the profile perspective based around relatively rearward cabin positioning and enhanced by little details like the side gill signature trim strip below the A-pillar, which here highlights the PHEV powertrain. Body-coloured wheel arch mouldings identify the two top trim variants, which get an upgrade from 18 to 20-inch alloy rims. The front, as you can see, is dominated by this huge grille. As on other Mazdas, little wings flow out of the top corners, but here they incorporate indicators. Vertical corner cutouts house narrow little fog lamps, and the LED headlights are a slight change from the brand's usual style too, featuring vertically stacked lamps and L-shaped illumination. That same L-shaped signature features again with the horizontal LED tail lamps, which in a refreshing change to the usual segment trend, aren't here connected by a full width reflective strip. Further down, subtle twin tailpipes peep out on each side of the bumper's black lower cladding, below slim reflectors. More significant, of course, is what you can't see, this car's newly developed Skyactiv multi-solution scalable architecture platform. The company's immediate future depends on it because this chassis is tasked with underpinning five hybrids, five plug-in hybrids, and three all-electric new models, all to be launched within the next three years. This, then, is how Mazda thinks a pricier, upper-mid-sized SUV should look. What will sell it to you, though, is premium cabin design. So, is that what we're going to be served up here? Possibly. You won't be wowed by the dour charcoal-toned interior of a model with entry-level exclusive line trim, but here at the other end of the range you start to take a little more seriously the promises made around the provision of intricate Japanese craftsmanship and cutting-edge technology. Take the facial recognition feature that's standard above entry trim and uses a camera to adjust seat and steering wheel position based on the driver's physique. What we like most about Mazda cabins, though, are the exemplary ergonomics. Enhanced here, by the way, that the new slim eight-speed auto gearbox has minimised transmission tunnel width, allowing for near-ideal pedal and seat placement. As usual, the company models this approach on what it calls Jimba Itai, a Japanese expression of intimate connection between horse and rider, that in this case expresses the oneness of car and driver. So, all quite different from anything else in the segment, and all uniquely Mazda. This Hiroshima brand wants nothing to do with silly sliders, frustrating gesture control systems, or irritating touch-sensitive buttons. The current trend for switch-like gear shift selectors has been roundly ignored too, and you don't even get touch sensitivity for the central monitor, which is just as well because it would be quite a stretch to reach it. Instead, if you're able to stretch to this top version, your eye will be drawn to the cool white Nappa leather upholstery, the pale maple wood trim, and an unusual hand-stitched fabric dashboard covering, apparently inspired by Masubu, the art of Japanese binding. The traditionally made door card fabric reacts to changes in light, and on all models, it's complemented by real metal inserts with 50s Cadillac-style slashes. We mentioned the screen tech, which isn't as in your face as it usually is with expensive new models in this day and age, mainly because the 12.3 inch centre display is long and narrow and the virtual gauges on the instrument monitor, also 12.3 inches wide, look quite realistic. 
That binnacle screen isn't especially configurable. Aside from altering the font size on the virtual dial digits, pretty much the only thing you can do is to prioritise an iActiveSense drive assist screen layout. You certainly can't have the full screen mapping layout option that plenty of rivals provide. Instead, this screen offers a colourful welcome startup display, after which the two virtual dials change in colour with my drive mode selection, the left hand gauge being a power meter rather than a rev counter in this PHEV model. This left hand wheel spoke info button changes the display in the centre of the right hand dial between MPG and miles per kilowatt hour consumption, engine temperature, and iActive Sense drive assist status. This instrument screen is also supplemented by a standard head up display that's three times larger than that used on Mazda's smaller models. Anything else you'll need to know can be found on the Mazda Connect Centre infotainment screen, the largest the brand's ever offered, which is controlled by this lower circular Connect commander capstan below the gear stick. BMW may have abandoned this functionality format, but we're pleased this Japanese maker has persisted with it because it allows you to far more easily access frequently used features without taking your eyes off the road. This latest generation monitor reacts more quickly to inputs and contains all the expected information, entertainment, communication, navigation and settings menus, plus on most variants a high quality 12 speaker Bose audio system. In addition, there's wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. What this monitor is fortunately not burdened with is controls for the climate system which are separated out further down the centre stack with a row of buttons underscoring this rather cheap looking digital display. We mentioned the exemplary ergonomics earlier and that facial recognition system which takes account of an inputted height then uses a camera in the centre display to identify the position of your eyes at which point it can adjust over 250 settings to fit your physique and personal preferences. This setup not only adjusts seat and steering wheel but also the mirrors, the angle of the head up display, even the sound and climate control settings. All of it done in an instant before your drive begins. Does it work? Well, the system doesn't always get your seat positioning quite right, but the end result is usually close enough to require only minimal final adjustment as you proudly explain the technology to your passengers and sink into Nappa leather stitched upholstery that on a CX60 will usually be cooled as well as heated. A power adjustable steering wheel, Mazda's first, is needed of course to make the facial recognition gadget work and it gives the wheel up to 45 millimeters of rake and up to 70 millimeters of reach adjustment, which ought to be enough to suit a very wide variety of shapes and sizes. As should the center armrest, which is 230 millimeters longer and 37 millimeters wider than the one in the CX-5. Hard scratchy plastics are confined to an area lower down by the glove box, but otherwise everything feels suitably plush with chrome highlights, silver inlays and nicely damped buttons. And practicalities, well, you might not care too much about that if you're a customer for this top Takumi trim level, because all this pale trimming is about the least practical finish you could imagine for a typical muddy British winter. But there are darker, though less appealing trim combinations further down the range if you want them. And Mazda's put in a great deal of effort to make forward visibility better than it usually is on a larger SUV of this kind. Over the shoulder visibility isn't quite as good, hampered by thick rear pillars, but with the standard fitment of all round sensors and a rear view camera, that shouldn't be a problem. Cabin storage is reasonably provided for with reasonable shaping for the glove box and door bins, plus a lidded cup holder compartment to the left of the gear stick. There are ticket clips on the sun visors, a rather shallow box between the seats beneath the centre armrest and a tray for your phone which can include an unfortunately optional wireless phone charging mat. Plus there are the usual pair of USB-C ports and a 12 volt socket and unlike most of its rivals Mazda hasn't forgotten an overhead compartment for your sunglasses. Right, let's take a look in the back. Now the large rear doors make it easy to lean in and install perhaps a child seat and of course access is eased too. 
Once inside, there's not the kind of significantly larger feel compared to Mazda's smaller CX-5 crossover that loyal brand customers might be hoping for. You'll find plenty of space for your feet, but only because it's so easy for them to slide beneath the front seat to head. Actual knee room is a little down on what you get from rivals like the Lexus NX or the Volvo XC60, but it's still possible for one tall adult to sit behind another without feeling too cramped. It's a little awkward to fit a third middle-seated adult back here, though, thanks not only to the prominent centre tunnel, but also to this bench's rather high-set centre section. Unfortunately, unlike some segment competitors, Audi's Q5, for instance, that bench doesn't slide back and forth, and six-footers might find their hair beginning to brush the ceiling, particularly on models like this one fitted with Mazda's optional glass panoramic roof. There are rear centre vents, but no option of three-zone climate control that would give you temperature buttons back here. You do, of course, get the usual rear seat features you'd expect of a car in this class. Seat back pockets, decent door bins, a centre armrest with twin cup holders, a couple of USB-C charging ports and overhead coat hooks. Plus, the provided Isofix child seat fastening clips on both sides of the cabin are easily accessible. With the optional convenience pack, you get this useful three-pin plug socket and if you avoid base trim, you get rear seat heaters as well. Getting out can sometimes be a touch tricky because part of the wheel arch slightly obstructs the lower corner of the door opening. As usual in this class, there's no third row seating option. If you need that, you'll need to ask your dealer about the seven seat CX-80 model that rides on the same platform as this car. Let's finish with a look at an area of this car that really should impress you, the boot. We've got the CX-60 in PHEV form here, a drivetrain format which with rivals usually means heavily compromised cargo capacity due to the way that the system batteries must normally be housed beneath the boot floor, not here. Once the power-operated tailgate rises, there's 570 litres of capacity on offer in this plug-in hybrid model, just the same as you'd get in the conventional diesel and petrol versions. Compare that to what you get in obvious PHEV segment rivals, the 450 and 455 litre figures delivered respectively from the Audi Q5 TFS IE and the BMW X3 xDrive 30e. A plug-in Volvo XC60 has 468 litres, only the Lexus NX 450h Plus plug-in gets anywhere near this Mazda's ballpark, offering 525 litres. It's probably nitpicking to point out that the size of this boot isn't actually that much bigger than the smaller CX-5, which offers 522 litres, but which can't be had in plug-in hybrid form. Though the width of the tailgate opening is 35 millimetres wider than it is in that car. We should also point out that the 570 litre capacity figure just quoted for this CX-60 includes this extra underfloor space. It's just 477 litres above the cargo area base. If that's enough, you'll appreciate the low loading lip, this left-hand side storage net and the provided 12 volt socket on the right. Here on the left, there's also the three pin 1500 watt AC socket provided as part of the optional convenience pack we've fitted here. You might also want the useful roll-up partition net that features with this test car. The cargo area's wide square shape's useful too, but you can't fully make the most of it because Mazda doesn't offer an adjustable height boot floor. Another irritation is that below the cargo base, there's no sort of spare wheel included. At the time of this test, you couldn't even specify one as an option. Still, the backrest's reclining function enables you to position it quite vertically, useful for when you're trying to cram suitcases in. And long items like skis can be poked between a couple of rear-seated passengers thanks to the rear backrest's flexible 40-20-40 split. When you need to flatten everything via these cargo sidewall catches, up to 1,726 litres of space can be freed up.
Pricing, of course, will be key to the success of this car. And we'll quote it based on the figures current at the time of our test in autumn 2022. This CX60 PHEV four-wheel drive only variant is offered in the UK in three well-specified trim grades. Base exclusive line, priced from around 45,500. Mid-level Homura, priced from around 48,000. And this top Takumi variant, priced from around 49,000. £500. If you'd prefer the more conventional 3.3 litre E Sky Active D mild hybrid diesel model, prices start from around £43,000 for the 200 PS version with base exclusive line trim and rear wheel drive. You can also have a CX60 diesel with the same exclusive line trim and all wheel drive, plus a higher output 254 PS engine, priced from just over 45,500 or from just under 51,000 pounds in top Takumi trim. That's obviously well above Mazda's only slightly smaller CX5 SUV, which shells in the 30 to 40,000 pound bracket. You'll need some perspective on pricing, which is that although Mazda is tilting here at premium brand models, the asking figures here aren't that much different to what you'd pay for mainstream brand contenders. So the £45,000 entry-level figure for this PHEV variant, that's the powertrain most CX60 customers will want, is a fraction higher than a Toyota RAV4 plug-in hybrid, but a fraction lower than a Peugeot 3008 hybrid for 300. Quite a few of the other mainstream brand contenders in this segment, PHE variants of the Ford Cougar and the Citroen C5 Aircross, for instance, are quite a lot less powerful and front-driven only, so not really comparable with a four-wheel drive CX60. If you agree that the quality standards here match what you get in a posher premium brand model in this segment, you'll be pleased to find that one of those costs quite a bit more. At the time of this test, the Lexus NX 450H+, the Audi Q5 TFSIE, the BMW X3 xDrive 30e, and the Land Rover Discovery Sport P300e were all pitched at or around the £53,000 price point. You'd need around £60,000 for a Volvo XC60 T6 recharge or a Jaguar F-Pace P400e, and over £62,000 for a Mercedes GLC 300e. So, premium quality, mainstream brand pricing. If that combination makes sense to you and you're browsing in this segment, then you'll need to know exactly how generous Mazda has been in terms of standard spec. So let's take a look at that now. The base exclusive line trim level certainly includes quite a lot. There's 18 inch gray metallic alloy wheels, LED auto leveling headlamps, a powered tailgate, auto headlamps and wipers, all round parking sensors, a reversing camera, smart keyless entry, and cruise control with an adjustable speed limiter. Inside, at exclusive line level, it doesn't feel all that exclusive, but there's black leather upholstery, heated front seats, a frameless auto-dipping rear-view mirror, a head-up display, a 12.3-inch screen for the instrument cluster, dual-zone climate control, and a heated leather-wrapped steering wheel. Media connectivity is taken care of by another 12.3-inch screen, this one for the Mazda Connect infotainment system, which offers wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, a navigation system with European mapping and five years of free map updates, integrated Bluetooth and an eight-speaker DAB audio system. All CX60 customers also get the easy to install My Mazda app, which on this PHEV variant can be used to remotely start or stop charging and to remotely control cabin climate. Additionally, you can use it to send a navigation route to your car from your tablet or PC or to lock the doors remotely. Most CX60 customers, though, will want to start their perusal of the range from mid-level Humura spec, which is visually distinguished from the exclusive line by body-coloured wheel arch mouldings and a dark-plated signature wing grille surround, plus gloss black mirrors and honeycomb grille treatment, while 20-inch black alloy wheels finish the exterior look.
Inside, the Humura grade features seat heating for the outer rear seats and ambient lighting, plus it's equipped with a unique Mazda driver personalization system that will recognize the occupant of the driver's seat via facial recognition and automatically adjust the surroundings. Seat position, steering wheel, mirrors, head-up display, even the sound and climate control settings to fit their physique as well as their personal preferences. At Humura level, you can swap the dark black leather upholstery for white Nappa leather too. At the top of the CX60 range is the Takumi trim level we have here, which features 20 inch black machined alloy wheels and body colored mirrors, combined with chrome plated signature wing grille treatment and side window surrounds. The gloss black bar type radiator grille design is another feature unique to this flagship grade. And inside at Takumi level, you get a much more unique feeling interior featuring white Nappa leather upholstery, white maple wood interior accents, a woven fabric dashboard finish, bright finishing inlays and a white stitched dual tone steering wheel. Diesel Takumi models get a standard panoramic sunroof as well. What about options? Well, if you choose base exclusive line trim, you'll be offered the chance to add an extra cost comfort pack to give you some of the niceties fitted further up the range. Specifically, 20 inch alloy wheels, also offered separately, electric front seats, front seat ventilation, rear seat heaters, and the Mazda driver personalization system technology. Individual options include door mirror covers and a rear bumper step plate. And across the CX60 lineup, you can add a panoramic roof for the first time on a Mazda and what the brand calls a convenience pack. We have both things fitted here. The convenience pack gives you privacy glass, wireless phone charging, a three pin 1500 watt AC socket in the boot and a 360 view monitor with a see through view that helps you in tight spaces. There's also a driver assistance pack, which we'll brief you on when we come to talk about safety. Opt for one of the mild hybrid models and the convenience pack and driver assistance pack come combined and can't be ordered separately. Across the range, as you'd expect, you can specify a tow bar. In fact, the car has a towing mode within the MyDrive system that activates when it's fitted. And of course, you can also add roof crossbars for the fitment of racks for bicycles, roof boxes, skis and snowboards. Disappointingly, what you couldn't have at the time of this test was any sort of spare wheel, not even a space saver one. Mazda told us that one was under development and would be available later in the production cycle. Bear in mind that you'll almost certainly be paying your dealer more for your choice of paint colour. The only standard one is solid Arctic White. That's not to be confused with a new shade Mazda is introducing for this model, Rhodium White Premium Metallic. The brand's signature shades make a reappearance too. Machine Grey and this test car's Soul Red Crystal. Okay, enough with that, on to safety. Well catered for, thanks to Mazda's range of advanced eye active sense driver assistance systems. The brand's autonomous braking setup is called Advanced Smart City Brake Support and its forward sensing camera can detect vehicles and pedestrians both by day and night. It can also stop you from dangerously turning across traffic at junctions. Other key eye active sense driver supporting technologies included as standard across the range are a lane keep assist system with lane departure warning and blind spot monitoring to stop you from dangerously pulling out in front of another vehicle. Plus traffic sign recognition and rear cross traffic alert to alert you to oncoming traffic when reversing out of a space. Mazda also includes a driver attention alert system that will prompt you if signs of drowsiness are detected. And there's hill descent control, which will help you retain control of your CX60 when slithering down slippery slopes. For this model, Mazda's added a vehicle exit warning system that alerts occupants just about to open their door in the face of oncoming traffic. As usual, on a modern car, there's also an e-call with GPS system that will alert the authorities to your location should the airbags go off in an accident. There are quite a few of those because the brand has fitted centre airbags and rear seat side airbags to support the usual front ones. 
It's also worth pointing out that the CX60 is fundamentally safe as well, as was proved by this car's five-star Euro NCAP rating, which saw it achieve some excellent individual scores, 88% for adult passengers, 91% for child occupants, and 89% for pedestrian safety. This showing is thanks to three so-called breakthrough technologies when it comes to front impact mitigation. Firstly, the body's multi-path structure absorbs energy through three separate load paths, main, upper and lower, to soften the impact on occupants and minimise cabin deformation. Secondly, the axial compression frame doubles energy absorption efficiency. And thirdly, the framework is designed to be as straight as possible. Side impact protection has been well thought through too. The frame connections, traditionally a weak point in terms of accident bending and twisting, have been strengthened to distribute load and high strength materials feature bonded with new moulding technology. Should you ever be hit from the rear, you'll be thankful that the CX60 has been designed to absorb twice as much rear impact energy as its CX-5 showroom stablemate. Previously, Mazda vehicles have absorbed energy at the back by the bending and deformation of the rear frame. In contrast, the CX-60 uses axial deformation of the rear side frame to absorb double the energy. This car's pedestrian injury mitigation measures include an energy absorbing bonnet, which will be aided by the front wings to more gently absorb head impact in the case of a collision with a pedestrian. Plus the weight of the internal structure of the bumper face has been carefully controlled so that it will gently absorb leg and hip impact. If you're worried about accident issues with the PHEV model's battery, then don't be. That battery is housed in malleable aluminium and extremely strong crack-resistant material, and various measures have been implemented to cut off parts other than the battery from the high-voltage system in the event of a collision. In such a situation, a circuit interrupter and voltage reducer are used to shut off the flow of electricity that would cause power dissipation. Good to know. If you want to go further in terms of safety provision, then you'll need the optional driver assistance pack we mentioned earlier, which includes a variety of camera safety and driver assist features. There's FCTA, or Front Cross Traffic Alert, which detects vehicles approaching from the blind spots on the front left and right sides of the car when you start to drive off at an intersection. FCTA then notifies the driver of possible danger using audible and dash display warnings. The driver assistance pack also gives you two useful smart brake support features. One is SBSR, or Smart Brake Support Rear, which anticipates an impending rear-end impact, minimising its effects. Plus, it can automatically brake the car if you're about to reverse into something. There's also SBSRC, or Smart Brake Support Rear Crossing, which builds on the functionality of the rear cross traffic alert system we mentioned earlier, with autonomous braking if warnings go unheeded. There's lots of clever technology here, but if you're looking for the most efficient car in this segment, then the CX-60 isn't it. Mazda's concentrated instead on matching the prevailing mid-class standard and doing so at affordable prices. So let's start with the PHEV version tested here because that's what most customers will want. The keynote stats for that are 39.35 miles of all-electric driving range, providing you stay under 62 miles an hour, and a CO2 reading of up to 33 grams per kilometer, which puts this car into the 12% benefiting kind taxation bracket. You'll need some class perspective on that. Those returns basically duplicate those of a pricier Audi Q5 50 TFSIE. Not bad, but you can certainly do better in this segment. For the same money as is being asked for a CX60 PHEV, a Toyota RAV4 plug-in hybrid manages 22 grams per kilometer and 8% BIK figures basically replicated by the Lexus NX450H Plus, which uses the same powertrain but costs a big chunk more than this Mazda. If you want to do better still, spending around £17,000 more than is required for a CX60 PHEV 
we'll get you a Mercedes GLC 300e with a CO2 reading of just 12% and a consequential BIK reading of just 5%. This Mazda looks good though against cars in this sector using older powertrains, all of them pricier like the Land Rover Discovery Sport P300e rated at 36 grams per kilometre and the BMW X3 xDrive 30e rated up at 48 grams per kilometre. This Mazda plug-in hybrid's 12% benefiting kind tax banding equates to a monthly tax liability for a base exclusive line trimmed CX60 PHEV of £181 for 40% taxpayers. The charging time for this PHEV model 17.8 kilowatt hour battery from a 7.2 kilowatt garage wall box should be about one and a half hours. That's based on replenishing from 20 to 80%. If you're forced to connect up to a domestic socket, then the 20 to 80% charging time would rise to 4 hours and 50 minutes. There's no option to get a 3 phase 11 kilowatt charger or a DC charger. You can schedule charging either via the My Mazda app or via a charging schedule section of the high voltage battery monitor part of the centre screen where you'll also find details on battery charge level plus your EV range and total driving range. That centre screen also provides a drive efficiency monitor section where you'll find a useful graphical fuel efficiency history display showing your recent consumption in MPG and miles per kilowatt hour, readouts which can be replicated in the instrument binnacle as well. Driving efficiently in this PHEV model will also require you to keep an eye on the instrument binnacle's left-hand power meter gauge. There's a charge button near the gear stick that allows the engine to charge up the PHEV battery as you drive, but using fuel rather than a charge point to do that is notably inefficient, so you'll probably ignore it. Of more use is the option, buried away in the centre screen's settings menu, to alter the car's brake regeneration level. There are only two options, normal or high, the latter slowing the car a little more noticeably. As for this plug-in hybrid variant's quoted combined cycle fuel figure, WLTP rated at 188.3 mpg, well, that's as real-world irrelevant as it is with any other PHEV. It's an interesting class barometer, though. With plug-in versions of the Toyota RAV4 and Lexus NX, you're in the mpg 300s, and with the Mercedes GLC 300e, the WLTP mpg figures up in the 500s. Yes, really. It's way past time a realistic MPG rating system was introduced for cars of this kind. Of course, as with any PHEV, if you don't regularly plug the thing in, you'll just be driving about in quite a heavy petrol-powered model, and a heavy petrol-powered SUV really isn't a very frugal thing at all. If, on the other hand, you're fastidious in keeping the battery topped up and you make the very most of that EV driving range, then you can expect this car to be about as frugal as a good SUV diesel in this class. The mild hybrid CX60e Sky Active D, for instance. Going for one of those in base rear-driven 200 PS form gets you a combined cycle fuel consumption of 56.5 mpg with CO2 emissions of 129 grams per kilometre, equating to a BIK rate of 30%. The all-wheel drive 254 PS diesel model's average fuel consumption is 53.3 mpg, with CO2 emissions from 137 grams per kilometre, equating to a BIK rating of 32%. Forget any thoughts you might have about diesels being old hat. This CX60's six-cylinder oil burner is a particularly sophisticated piece of kit. The 3.3-litre E Skyactiv D engine has been cleverly designed to use surplus air to improve combustion, all part of innovative, highly advanced DCPCI, or distribution-controlled, partially premixed compression ignition combustion technology, which improves thermal efficiency by over 40% for a considerable part of the operating range. It also gets the brand's latest M-Hybrid 48 volt tech, shared with the third engine in the range, another normally aspirated six-cylinder power plant, the 3.0-litre E Skyactiv-X petrol unit. 
This borrows the smart lean combustion control technology developed for the four-cylinder E Skyactiv X engine used in the Mazda 3 and Mazda CX-30 and has internal EGR control that achieves combustion with a particularly low ratio of fuel to air. As a result, Mazda promises that this big six-cylinder petrol power plant can return fuel figures comparable to those of a two-litre four-cylinder unit. Those claims work out in Mazda's four-cylinder Skyactiv X models, but as we filmed, figures weren't yet available for the E Skyactiv X version of this CX-60. Ultimately, the depth of technology built into these two MHEV engines simply has to make a difference, which should mean that their efficiency figures will be rather more easily real-world achievable than those of obvious rivals. What else might you need to know about the running costs of various versions of this Mazda? Well, insurance for the CX-30 PHEV is Group 38A for base exclusive line trim or 39A for the two plusher variants. We should additionally mention the warranty, the usual unremarkable Mazda three-year or 60,000 mile package. If you want to extend that, you can do so via optional essential, elite and complete plans. Included in the standard package is a three-year paintwork warranty and 12 years of anti-perforation cover. In addition, there's a Mazda accident aftercare scheme, which sees the company liaise with your insurer after an accident, making sure that you have access to a courtesy car if you need one, and ensuring that all repairs are carried out to full Mazda standards. The CX-60's PHEV battery is covered by an eight-year, 100,000-mile warranty, which provides for all battery repairs or a replacement if a malfunction occurs. Service intervals are in line with the rest of the Mazda range, so every 12,500 miles or every 12 months, whichever comes first. You'll be offered the option of a prepaid Mazda service plan via a one-off payment or monthly instalments. Owners can keep up to date with their car's maintenance schedule via the vehicle status monitor in the information section of that Mazda Connect multimedia system screen which briefs you on the time of your next service and various maintenance issues. Or you could manage this via the useful My Mazda app, which can give you reminders about servicing and through which you can book your car in at your local dealership and access a digitally stored record of your model's service history. Finally, residual values. Well, the story is quite encouraging here. Over a typical three year or 36,000 mile ownership period, this PHEV variant is expected to hold on to 52 to 53 percent of its original value, which is well ahead of the Lexus NX 450H Plus at 47 percent and the Volvo XC60 T6 Recharge at 49 percent. Whether customers in this segment will view this Mazda as being properly premium, it's difficult to say. As far as we're concerned, the car itself certainly is in every way that really matters. And if you agree, you'll see this CX-60 as a decent value alternative to a posher mark rather than a slightly pricey mainstream brand alternative. There's as much powertrain electrification as Mazda thinks customers in this class currently need. Plus the cabin's beautifully finished and refreshingly different from anything else in the segment. There are also some clever tech touches like the facial recognition cabin adjustment feature and the brands put some effort into making this CX-60 more engaging to drive than most of its rivals, most notably with its kinetic posture control system. Sure enough, this car feels more agile at speed through the turns than you'd expect anything this big and heavy to be. Not everything's perfect, of course. The rather firm ride isn't quite as well resolved over poorer surfaces as we'd like, nor is the steering rack quite as fearsome as it should be on a crossover supposed to put the Sport back into SUV. Plus, powertrain refinement in this PHEV version should be better. But the engine technology is impressive, and we expect the class competitive efficiency stats to be a bit more real world achievable than those posted by some rivals. 
It'll be a pity if all of this worthy effort is shipwrecked on the rocks of badge snobbery. Better cars than this have failed at that crucial hurdle. The CX60, though, deserves better. Over to you. <laughs>